Hey, what's up DIYers, Mike Boards, welcome to Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. In today's video, we are going to open up vehicle skates for tires for a vehicle that we're actually going to rebuild over the next few months or years. Let's get started. All right, DIYers outside now, and here is the box, and it looks a little roughed up. Hopefully the internal parts are not damaged. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we're dealing with. With everything removed from the package, it comes with the steel plates, the caster wheels, and the instructions. We purchased the eight by 16 inch plates, and there are a couple different size options. We will share down below in the comment section as well as the description section. However, I got a tape measure. I wanna show you our measurements. Again, eight by 16. And what we'll do now, reference the instructions, and all we're going to do is open up the caster wheels and remove the top bolt and washer, feed the caster wheel stud through the plate, and secure it. Do not over tighten bolts. Doing so may restrict caster movement. That would not be good. I removed a caster wheel from the packaging. You've got a nut and a washer. Be very careful. This portion here is your bearing, and it has grease. You do not want to touch that and get that all over the place or on your clothes. From here, we'll go grab a socket to match this nut. Back from the toolbox, and in our case, the nut is a three-quarter size. We will carefully remove this nut and washer. And we are going to feed this threaded stud through one of the holes on the steel plate. I went ahead and took a second caster out of the packaging and referencing the pictorial image in the instructions, I want to position the caster wheels as they are in the instructions. And again, the washer and nut go on top. I will carefully feed the threaded stud through the hole and do not harm the thread. Carefully pick this up. The washer goes on and the nut. Do not cross thread your three quarters inch nut. It should go on very easily, smoothly, and in a friendly manner. Go ahead and hand tighten it, and I'll do the same for the second caster wheel, washer, and three quarters inch nut. Hand tighten them until you can't hand tighten them anymore. Next, grab your three quarter inch socket and ratchet and secure the nuts on the studs. And as mentioned in the instructions, do not over tighten bolts. Making progress, first two caster wheels are secured on the plate and I will continue installing the second two as well as all the remaining caster wheels for the three remaining plates. Quick update, in the event that you run into what I did, I've got a three quarters inch socket on the upper nut and on the bottom, I've got an adjustable wrench grabbing a hold of that lower nut and that alleviates the lower nut and stud from spinning while I tighten the upper nut with the three quarters inch socket. At this point, all 16 casters are properly secured to the steel plates and again, as the instructions instructions mention in the event that you over tighten them the caster wheels will not operate as designed so again be careful and keep that in mind as you secure these nuts to the studs from here i just want to test that all caster wheels move and operate as designed and just give them a good push as shown here you can actually turn them upside down and spin them by hand however you want to do it. And in our case, all looks good and is operating as designed. In addition to sliding the skis on the wheels to make sure the wheels spin, go ahead and spin the casters and make sure all of the casters spin and rotate in a friendly and efficient manner. What we'll do next is go grab the car from the field that is going to be rested on these steel plates or skis and rebuilt over the months and years. At this point, DIYers, I want to reference two vehicles, a Chrysler Pacifica and a Chevy Colorado and the tire sizes. Let's start with the Pacifica. And as you can see, that's gonna be a pretty perfect fit. And as far as size of the tires, let's find it here. There's a big portion, but a small portion right there, 235 60 R18. Let's go over to the Chevy Colorado. And perfect, really. So we really like this measurement. And as far as the Chevy Colorado size tires, 245 slash 70 R16. Not sure if this will be useful info for you or a beneficial picture of the skates in line with tires, but I just wanted to show you that. All right, DIYers, I talked to the tow truck company. They're going to be about three to four hours until they can tow the vehicle to my house. About 75 yards from our lawn is a creek. And right now it's filled with ducks. I'm not sure if you can hear them chattering out there. Got my duck call, I'm going to talk to him. This is a comeback call for those that don't know duck calls. I love the sound of ducks. All right, DIYers, at the vehicle right now, 91 Chevy Cavalier, and it has been sitting in this exact spot for almost 15 years. And we're gonna pull it out today. It is sunk about six inches in 
to the ground. Look at that. Here's the top of the ground right here. And it is down there. The earth is trying to eat it. But we're not going to let it. We're going to pull it out today and move it. Check that out. Make progress. It's starting to rain. And that is deep. Again, about six to eight inches into the ground over the years. To the opposite side. Check that out. My goodness. Well, now we have a seized rear passenger wheel, and they're gonna have to throw the entire dolly to get this thing moving. Woodchuckle. Yikes. Quick update, the rain is here, and it looks like a derby car coming out of that little muddy pit back there. That's the update, here we go. Alright DIYers got the car placed in the spot that I want it for now and all around incredible experience with the towing company. His name was Justin. Very professional, very knowledgeable, knew what he was doing the entire time. Absolute pleasure to work with. He was awesome. And from here I am going to rinse it off, get all that dirt off there. And this rain really came out of nowhere. It wasn't supposed to rain today. She's all rinsed off. Definitely potential, right? Or no? Yeah. Good morning to you DIYers. It is now the next morning. We've got the skates out, the jack out, a couple blocks to put behind the tires, and we are going to start with the rear tires. This is a front wheel drive vehicle. As you have the car carefully lifted up, just carefully slide these skates right under the tire. Just like that. And when you lower the vehicle or release the pressure on the jack, do it very slowly. At this point, all four tires are perfectly aligned and resting on the skate, and I highly recommend making sure all your tires are inflated. Unfortunately, our passenger rear will not inflate. It has a hole in it, and it leaks out pretty fast. From here, what I'll do is set the camera down, and I'm going to show you me attempting to move this car, and I'm not strong. I'm probably the least strong out of all my brothers, so I'm going to show you if I can do it. And to the skate's disadvantage, Unfortunately, I don't have a perfectly level blacktop driveway. There are a little bit of ruts, and that is not the skate's fault. However, before that, real quick, I just wanted to show you what they look like underneath. See that? It's actually not that bad. It's kind of fun. I'm going to reposition the camera. All right, DIYers, I'm having just a little bit of trouble moving the front end of the vehicle. It's got the engine. The engine is very heavy and the back end is empty. It's a trunk. It's very light. And one thing to take into consideration again, I'm not giving the skates any advantages with my uneven blacktop driveway. And also the caster wheels, once you move one end of the vehicle, the caster wheels on the front end begin to offset and you may need to carefully tap it with a rubber mallet to properly align the front caster wheels to allow you to move the vehicle a lot more efficiently. At this point, I'm in front of the car and I like them. I'm glad I got them. And if my driveway was a lot smoother and didn't have such a downward slant to it over there, it would have gone a lot easier. And even with that downward slant, it moved. And as you can see, it's in a completely different spot than where it was. What I'll do is I'll clean the garage. I'm going to push this back 
inside the garage i may need help from one of my brothers i'll call them shortly and i'll tuck it away until it comes time to rebuild so that is it hopefully this helps DIYers. say do us a favor below the video you will see that thumbs up icon click on that like the video subscribe to the channel definitely ring your youtube bell that would be very helpful to us we would really appreciate it pop the hood open and what the animals have done to the vehicle over the years it has been sitting pretty impressive We are putting it in the main garage and night and day difference for the casters when they leave the blacktop and make it to solid concrete. They roll so nicely. We love those. There's the DIY Raptor on this nice summer evening. Got to get some flowers to go all around that pallet to hide the pallet. We do not want to bury it because the pallet will rot fast. And that's what it connects to. Thanks again for watching.